Let's explore the relationships between the numbers that you might find in the data sheet for a three-phase motor. In this particular video, we'll look at the Baldor EM2551TS-12 motor. This is a 75 horsepower motor that operates on a 460 volt system. Here we'll look at the nameplate data. And you'll see I've written down some of these numbers already. It's a 75 horsepower machine. It has an efficiency of 0.95. It has a power factor of 0.87. And it operates on a 460 or a 230 volt system. We're going to look at the 460 volt system only. If we've done our job right, we should find that the line current is 85 amps when the motor is powered by a 460 volt AC system. This is to be a two-step process. In the first process, we'll look at things like power flow diagrams, power triangles, and single phase representations. In the second process, we'll actually go through the calculations using Scilab. You'll notice this is a single line diagram. A single wire is used to represent the three wires in our three-phase system, and that will be important to us later on. We'll start this process by looking at a power flow diagram. Here we've got power in, we've got power out, and we have some losses along the way. There's some I squared R losses in the stator, there's some I squared R losses in the rotor, then there's other losses such as friction and windage. Recall this is a big motor, it does have a fan and it takes energy to push that fan around. The power out of this motor is 75 horsepower and later we'll need to do a conversion where we take 75 horsepower and we'll convert it to watts. And recall that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. The efficiency of this motor is given as 95% which means that 95% of the power in ends as power out and 5% ends up in these various losses. We could rewrite that by saying that efficiency is equal to power out over power in and it follows that the power in is equal to power out over efficiency. We can use a power triangle to organize our thoughts we already know that the power in is equal to power out multiplied by 1 over efficiency. Power factor is the cosine of theta. From trigonometry we know that cosine theta is also equal to the adjacent side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. And it follows that the hypotenuse is equal to the adjacent side over the power factor which makes calculating the magnitude of S fairly straightforward. You could say it's equal to power out times 1 over efficiency times 1 over the power factor. We can calculate the angle theta here as arc cosine of the power factor. If we scroll back to the beginning, you'll notice that all of our discussions so far have included the entire output power of the motor, which was 75 horsepower. Our power in is also expressed as the total input power. In a three-phase system, in order to make the math a little bit easier, we're going to convert that into a single phase representation. We have our large power triangle, and what we're going to do is break that into three smaller triangles, representing phase A, phase B, and phase C. We can then draw everything as a single phase representation. So instead of 75 horsepower, we have 75 divided by 3 horsepower. Our efficiency remains the same. Our power factor remains the same. Our source voltage changes from line to line to line to neutral. So we went from our 460 volt system, which again is expressed as a line to line, and we divide that by root 3 so now we have the line to neutral representation and we'll put that at zero degrees just to make the math easier. Only a few steps left. So S phase is equal to S total divided by 3 which gives us our power triangle 
which is represented for each phase. So we're going to have some S, we're going to have some P, we're going to have some Q. We know that complex power is equal to the voltage times the complex conjugate of the current. It follows that the complex conjugate of the current is equal to complex power divided by the voltage. And our last step is to take the magnitude of the complex power and that should be the measured current. Now we can launch Scilab and follow along. First things first, let's enter our various numbers. Power out is equal to 75 horsepower. Efficiency is equal to 0.95. Power factor is equal to 0.87. Power in is equal to power out divided by efficiency. Now that's expressed in horsepower, that's not quite what we want. We need to multiply it by 746 in order to convert it into watts. So the power in is 59 kW. We can calculate the angle of our power triangle. Or we could express it in degrees. So at this point we have power in is equal to 59 kW. We have the angle is equal to 29.5 degrees. We can calculate the magnitude of S as power in times 1 over the power factor. We can now express the complex power as a single vector. So S total is equal to the magnitude of S times E raised to the J times radians. Or if you prefer, we could have written that like so. Either way, it works out the same, although the complex exponential is a little more elegant. At this point, we have the complex power for the entire machine. We now calculate the complex power for each phase. So S phase is equal to S total divided by 3. We'll take a really quick look at S phase at this point. We'll see that power is equal to 20 kW and S is equal to 23 VA and our angle is about 30 degrees. Now we can calculate the line current and that is equal to S phase divided by the, the source voltage which in this case is 460 divided by the square root of 3. And now the absolute value of the line current should be 85 amps, which is exactly what we had on the original data sheet for the motor. Please look below in the video description for a link to the Scilab functions that I used. Also, if you have any particular electromechanical problems that you would like to see solved, please leave a shout in the comments.